All right, so we have a block tied to a block and the whole combination is being pulled up. Um, I'll go ahead and put in red here just to indicate a force vector. And I've got some lag issues going on. I think my processor is getting a little bit overtaxed. So I have this force vector pulling up. It's causing the whole thing to accelerate at 2.1 meters per second squared. And I'm going to go ahead and just start putting all the force vectors I need into this diagram. So that string T2 pulls down on the top block. In addition to that, you have the weight of that top block. So that's mg, or 3 times 9.8. If you have room, there's no problem with putting numbers into a force diagram. I get 29.4 newtons for that. Okay, and then T2 is also the same force pulling up on the 8.4 kilogram block. All right, each of those is T2. Just to make it clear, I'll just, oops, not T squared, T2. I'll just write T2 on each of those. And then I also have gravity pulling down on the eight kilogram block. And that would have a magnitude of 8.4 times 9.8. So it's always mg is the force of gravity. That's 82.32 newtons. I'll just keep the extra, the extra decimal point, 82.32. All right, and then I can start just sort of thinking through the problem, like how am I going to use Newton's laws to solve for the things that are unknown here? And I'm trying to get T1 and T2. And there's a couple ways to approach the problem, and I'm going to, I'm going to solve the problem one way, and then I'm going to check it the other way. So I would recommend on this problem, I just noticed that there's a simpler case here for this mass. It only has two forces on it. So I'm going to start with the analysis of this one. All right, just purely because it's simpler. So I look at the force analysis on this, and I have an, I'm assuming that plus is gonna be the upward direction. There's no reason to do otherwise. I have T2 is a positive force, 82.32 Newtons pointing down. That's gonna count as negative, and that's my net force. So I'm gonna write down Newton's second law. This is the 8.4 kilogram mass. I'm gonna write down F net equals MA. And F net is going to be T2 minus 82.32 Newtons. That's going to be equal to MA, so 8.4 kilograms times 2.1 meters per second squared. And I'll go ahead and solve for T2 by adding that 82.32 to the right-hand side. No need to show those details. And I get a total of 99.96, which would round to 100.0. All right, so I usually follow the convention of rounding to three significant digits. If you did that, you'd have to say 100 newtons, but I'm not going to nitpick that stuff. So now I know what T2 is. It's 100 newtons. And that means I know this unknown force on the little mass. So now there's only one unknown on the little mass, so I can, I can see my way through this. So on the 3.0 kilogram mass, apply F net equals MA. Positive force, that's T1, and then two negative forces, so minus 29.4, that's the weight. Minus 100, that's the tension in that middle string. There's the net force, and it's equal to the mass that I'm looking at, 3 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration. And I solve for T1. So 3 times 2.1 plus 100 plus 29.4. And I get 135.7 newtons for that.
I'll try to follow my own convention here and round that to three sig figs. All right, there is an alternative strategy for solving this problem. And the idea is that you can consider both masses together as a single mass of 11.4 kilograms. And then you ask yourself, what's pulling on this 11.4 kilograms? So I could analyze it that way. And I'm going to do this as a check on my work. And um, the way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to assume that T1 was, was the correct um, answer for the tension, and then I'll calculate the acceleration and make sure it agrees. So I'm going to make a new free body diagram. Say, okay, considered all together, because all this mass is accelerating at the same rate, we can just treat it all as an 11.4 kilogram mass. And then if I grab a force vector real quick, gravity's pulling down on that with a magnitude of mg. So the mass is 11.4, g is 9.8. That gives me 111.72 Newtons. No reason to round in the middle of a calculation. I mean, I wouldn't write 10 decimal places because that would look crazy. It would be an unnecessary mess. But I'll keep a couple extra. And then T1, I just calculated, was 136. And what I'm going to do is calculate the acceleration of this whole thing and make sure it agrees with what I started with. Then I can start to be more confident that I have the right answer. So I'm going to, I'm going to write Newton's second law in a little more convenient form. A equals F over M. And F net is going to be 136 positive minus 111.72 divided by 11.4 kilograms. And I get 2.13 out of it. 2.13 meters per second squared, which is understandable considering how much rounding we've done. So as a check on my work, that works pretty well to convince me that I had the right answer the first time around. 